Hey guys, my name is Jeff Gonzalez, and I'm a digital literacy consultant that supports elementary schools in the East. Today, my video is going to be talking about Google Hangouts and how we can apply Google Hangouts in the classroom. Google Hangouts is a great way that students are able to amplify their voice in the learning, become confident communicators and collaborators, and they can learn from with other students and experts within and beyond their schools. By using Hangouts, teachers are creating authentic opportunities for oral communication. We are also allowing our students to reflect on their own work and the work of their peers using Hangouts. Google Hangouts allows teachers to also build and maintain a professional learning network that allows us to collaborate with educators across the globe. The first thing that you're going to do to be able to access Google Hangouts is to sign into your drive. As you can see, here's my Google Drive and on the top right corner is where I can get the different applications that live in the G Suite. So let's go ahead and click on the Google Apps button here. And if I go down to more, you'll see that there is Google Hangouts. So please go ahead and select the button that says Google Hangouts. So once you have selected Hangouts, you will see your contacts on the left, like I have on my screen here, and you should see where it says video call, phone call, or message. You can send messages to your contact, just like I have done here on the left-hand side of my screen. But for today's purposes, we're going to be focusing on how to make a video call uh, so that we can talk to somebody virtually face-to-face. -face. So if you go ahead and select video call, which is in the middle of your screen, you will be taken to Google Meet. Google Meet and Google Hangouts work simultaneously and this is how we will be able to create our virtual chat room so we can talk to other people around the globe. When you're ready to create a Google Meet, one of the most common questions is how many people can we invite into the Google Meet? You are allowed to invite up to 100 people to participate in a video chat. So let's go ahead and create a Google Meet together. You're going to want to scroll over to where it says start a new meeting and click on the plus sign. So now that you've created your Google Meet, this is your virtual chat room that you have now created. If you look in the middle of your screen, you will see two options. The first option that is on your left is the turn off microphone option. The reason why some people may want to turn their microphone off is if you are in the same room as other participants, it will pick up multiple voices and then it will not sound as clear. So you may or may not want to turn off your microphone depending on if you're sitting in the room with other people that are in part of the Google Meet. To the right, it says turn off camera. You may also want to turn off the, your camera if you just wanted to participate and have other people hear your voice rather than your face being shown in the Google Meet. Um, this is for people who may not be comfortable with their voice, with their faces being shown. So the option of having both of those done are there for you. So let's go ahead and create our meet. So at the bottom here, I'm going to select where it says start meeting. So go ahead and select start meeting. So now that I've selected start meeting, this pops up where it gives me the address bar so I can copy and paste this and send it to other people by just uh, providing them the link to this Google Meet. As well, I can add people if I knew their email addresses. So for example, if I wanted to add Jennifer Giffen to my Google Meet, I could type in her name or just select her name and I can invite her to join my Google Meet. Now that we've created our Google Meet, this is our virtual chat room. I want to go over some of the features that exist in our virtual chat room. So if you look at the right here, you will see that this is a way that you can message people that exist in your chat room and you can talk to them not virtually face to face and that way you can send private private messages and communicate via chat in the Google Meet. As well, there is also the option of turning your microphone off like we had described before as well as turning your camera off. Now the really cool feature that a lot of people use Google Meet for is to show your screen to somebody else 
so that they can see what you are seeing. So for example, if I went hovered over here to where it says present now, I can either present my entire screen so they can see what I'm seeing, as well I can just present the window. I find that sharing your entire screen is sometimes beneficial because you want, you're trying to describe something to another educator or a student. So if I was to share my entire screen, they would see what I'm seeing and I could point and show them what it is exactly that, that I'm trying to communicate. So let's go ahead and share my entire screen as if I had other participants in my Google Meet. So once I click the share my screen, I, I'm brought to the following prompt. So here, it's gonna say share your screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the share button. And now everybody essentially who, is be, who would be joining my Google Meet would see exactly what it is that I am trying to show. So if I ever wanted to turn it off and let somebody else share their screen, all that I simply would have to do is just click on where it says stop presenting. And then now we are talking again, looking at each other's computers. There are also some other options as well. So if you hover down to the bottom right, where it says more options, I can either decide to go full screen where the whole Google Meet takes over my entire screen. So you, will not, you won't see any tabs at the top of your screen. If you don't like that view, you can always just exit back to this screen so you can see your tabs at the top of your Google Meet. Another option is if you go into settings, this is where you can decide the speakers and the microphone and the camera. You can decide which ones you would like to use if you had other applications. So right now mine is defaulting to the internal microphone, but if I had a microphone that I wanted to use that wasn't built into my computer, I could select that option as well. We could also see the quality of the resolution and the, and the quality of the receive of the resolution. So right now we're set up to high definition and maybe if I didn't have uh, the strongest internet connection, I could always change the resolution down so the picture is clear if it's not clear to begin with. Now that we've learned how to create a Google Hangout, I wanted to bring your attention to an application that can really engage your students. Jen Giffen uh, has created this resource and the bit.ly is right here bit.ly slash how to mystery. We're going to learn how to create a mystery hangout and this slide deck you can add if you just visit that bit.ly and you can add it to your drive at any time. So I'll give you guys a few seconds just to jot it down. Okay, so a mystery hangout is an activity which supports the following learning strategies that can really engage your students. So students will learn how to effectively communicate in different contexts in oral and written form. Uh, they'll be learning how to ask effective, effective questions to acquire knowledge. And they can select appropriate digital tools according to the purpose of the learning. So essentially, Mystery Hangout is where students connect with other students around the world and they engage in a series of questions where they can ask each other and really powerful learning as it extends beyond the four walls of the classroom. So I have a little video that I'd like to show you guys. Uh, it's about a minute and a half and if you guys could just watch it, it will explain to you what a Google, uh, sorry, what a mystery hangout is. Before I press play, I wanted to remind you guys that this video can be found on the slide deck that Jen Giffen created. It's on slide number three and all that you have to do is click on the play button. Let's go ahead and do that now so you guys can see the video and what Mystery Hangout is. In my classroom, I'll grasp onto any technology that can expand the kids' possibilities. Greeter, come on up. Learning comes from a teacher that's willing to take a risk 
and do something new and bring in these powerful tools. Hi, welcome to Mystery Skype. One of the key tools we're using right now is Skype to connect with other classrooms. It's so powerful to connect them beyond these four walls. Are you in the United States? Mystery Skype's a chance for the kids yes, yes. to connect with other students around the world. Are you east of Mississippi? Brothers no. Mountain. It's a challenging game for them. They have to critically think. It helps the kids understand other cultures in other countries. Are you in the U.S.? No, we're not. Are you, Are you somewhere in Mexico? <laughs> yes. It's a powerful tool to see kids learning from each other. Hey, Mateo, come on over. Bring those maps. To see their critical thinking process is far better than any test I can give them. Because of Mr. Bagley, learning seems to be really fun. It's more like a game instead of the teacher telling you, this is what we're going to be doing. It's a team effort to really win Mystery Skype. Do the Rocky Mountains run through your state? No, no. I mean, really, it takes a team to do anything in life. And this is a chance for them to experience that collaboration. Are you in Baja, California? No. You can see those light bulbs going off and just that connection that they're making. How better to do that than to actually connect with other kids all over the world? Do you have dry weather? Yes, we do have Technology dry empowers our class to be enabled to learn beyond our four walls. I'm just a passionate educator who wants to make an impact for kids. I'll take risks to try to expand their learning beyond what they could have ever imagined. Are you in Mexico City? Yes, we are. I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I did. I know the video talked about Mystery Skype. However, using Google Meet can use the same functionality as Skype, as Skype would cost money and Google Meet and Hangout are free. So Mystery Hangout slash Skype is a critical thinking challenge that your class takes part in while connecting with other classes around the world as you saw in the video. The goal is to guess where those other students are in the world by only asking yes or no questions. And now some of you may be thinking, how do I find partners around the globe that I can connect with if I really want to try this activity? One way is to get on Twitter and tweet out using mystery hangout or hashtag mystery Skype. I know of many educators in our York Region District School Board who have used Twitter to connect with other educators. And there are a plentiful amount of educators around the world that are just as excited as you are to connect and try this mystery hangout. There is also the Microsoft community, and if you visit that link that Jen has con uh, connected in the slide deck, you'll be brought into other educators like yourself who want to engage in Mystery Hangout. Let's go ahead and visit the Microsoft community link that is embedded in the slide deck. So if you hover over and select Microsoft community, you'll be brought to the following web page that talks about Mystery Skype from the video that we just watched. As you can see, when you're brought to the website, it allows you to learn how to connect with other educators across the globe, and it also provides you Skype resources that you can engage with your students. There's also the G Plus community, which is essentially a chat forum. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the G Plus community in case you have never seen it before. And as you can see, there are many educators who would like to get involved with Mystery Hangout. So Google Plus Community is a chat forum where other teachers around the globe are trying to connect with one another. In case some of you were wondering, the best way to access your Google Plus Community is if you go back to your Google Drive. So as you can see on my screen here, this is my Google Drive, and I'm going to go visit where the other apps live in the G Suite. So if I click on the button that shows me my apps, right here on the right, you'll see the G Plus community symbol. If you go ahead and select the G Plus community symbol, you will be brought to this home screen. I am part of this Google Plus community, but if I wanted to join another one, all that I would do is simply put it into the search bar so let's go ahead and put mystery hangout. And here I am ready to join this community on the left. 
So this is just another way that you can connect with other educators around the globe if this is something that you are interested in. Now that we've learned how to connect with other educators around the world, I want to go over some needs and some benefits that you will have once you engage in the Mystery Hangout. The first set of needs that you're going to need in order to engage in this type of learning is internet connection, webcam, microphone, and a strong audio. The reason being is because you want your learners' voices to be heard clearly and you need to have a good webcam that the students can see each other's faces. Some of the benefits that you will have when you engage with this type of learning is that it is student-led first and foremost. We are empowering their voices and we are letting them lead, lead the learning. We also create challenge-based learning for our students that challenges them to think criti critically. As well, we can also create partners for future projects that we can engage with other educators and students around the world. We are also teaching our students to collaborate and communicate globally, which pushes the boundaries of the four walls of the regular classroom. I strongly encourage you to engage with the, your learners as this can really excite and engage the audience and have students be the primary focus of the learning. Before you jump into using Mystery Hangout, there are some things that you need to do with your students in order to get them prepared to engage with this type of learning. It will be brand new learning for most of your students, so you need to have some pre-conversations with the students uh, so that they understand the boundaries that they're going to be engaging with with this type of learning. So the student, students first and foremost need to know the area so they can answer the questions accurately. You may want to practice using a mystery hangout with another class in your school or another colleague at another school. Um, this way the students can understand and get used to being in front of the camera because that might be something that is new to them and they might want to just get that out of their system and just be in front of a camera. Uh, they also maybe want to practice asking skills uh, questions, uh, general questions versus specific questions. Uh, students also have to have a document that needs to be for note-taking, whether that's using Google Docs or with a paper pencil. They need to have something where they are documenting the questions that they questions and answers that they are receiving. You should also co-create guidelines for video call etiquette. So, for example, they don't wear any clothing that would give away their location, no sports teams hats, as well as having those conversations with your students about appropriate behavior when they are on camera. Um, I highly, highly recommend that you do a practice session um, so that the students can kind of get it out of their system. And as well, you want to assign roles for the students during the Mystery Hangout. Now, the roles are going to vary from class to class. What Jen has embedded into this slide deck is a su mere suggestion. You don't have to follow these roles. However, they are there for you to explore with your students. I'm going to show you the roles. Um, you can decide if you'd like to use them or not, but I think it's beneficial if we just kind of go over some of the roles and the reasons why we create those roles. So if you hover over to number six here that Jen has created and click on where it says roles, it will take you to a doc that goes over the different roles that your students can have when they're engaging in Mystery Hangout. So here are some of the roles that you can assign your students. Uh, you may want to assign roles based upon students' interests, students' strengths. Um, the first and probably the most important job is the researcher's job. Now, you may or may not want to assign this to a specific student or a group of students. Um, that way the other students are not feeling like the other one is leading the group and they all have a voice together. Again, this comes down to what works best in your classroom. Um, but everyone needs an atlas and a computer. Uh, you can also have a specific role for a greeter. So that's the person who introduces themselves as well as the group. And that way they have one person that is kind of the, the point, of a point of contact with their face is always in front of the camera asking the questions. You can also have a specific role for questioners. So for example, um, the school questions that help us learn the whereabouts, this person is responsible for keeping the conversation going. 
it can be kind of uh, confusing if you have multiple kids trying to speak on the camera. If you assign one person to be the questioner or two people to be the questioners, it might help to alleviate some of that uh, screaming and the other students wanting to be on camera. You can also have the closer role where they are wrapping up the mystery Skype and they thank the other class and ask some other questions. You can also have a photographer. So this person is responsible for taking high quality photos while everyone is working. So you can kind of capture what's going on. Um, this way you can upload the photos and you can kind of make a collage and you can reflect on the learning uh, with your students. So these are just some of the roles that Jen has suggested. Again, you don't have to go through every single role, but it might be beneficial depending on the number of groups or num sorry, number of students in the group to have roles for every student so they all feel included in the process of Mystery Hangout. The final application to use Google Hangouts and Meet is what's it called a Five Clue Challenge. The Five Clue Challenge is a website that has short videos where teachers and students give five clues about their area. The students must figure out the answer to the riddle in as few clues as possible. Students can also create their own video and upload it to the site as well. I'm going to show you a short introductory video around what the Five Clue Challenge is. You can access this video by clicking on the video that's embedded in the slide deck that Jen has created on slide number eight. So once you click on the video, you will be taken to this YouTube link that shows an example of the five clue challenge. Let's take a look together. Hello and welcome to number two of our Where in the World Challenge. So just to review the rules, I'm going to give you five clues as to where I am. Number your paper one through five. After each clue, I'm going to pause, give you time to do some research. I want you to take a guess. Point system, if you get it right after the first clue, you get five points. Four after the second clue, so on and so forth, all the way down to only one point if you can get it after five clues. So here are your five clues for today. Number one, I'm at a tourist destination somewhere in Europe. So here, you may want to pause with your students and give them the opportunity to have some think time or to share with their partner or their groups if they are in partners or groups. Uh, so you have to decide what works best for your classroom if you're going to do individual or partner work. Let's continue with the challenge. Number two. The city I'm in is the capital of an island nation. Number three, a golden angel sits atop a monument next to me. You don't have to continuously press pause after each clue. You may just want the video to run uh, for two or three clues straight or all five clues. Uh, it depends on how challenging you feel that the task is with the students. So let's continue on with the task once more. Number four. Tourists gather here at 11.30 a.m. every day. And your last clue. The queen lives here for part of the year. If you guessed Buckingham Palace, you are correct. As well, embedded on slide 8 of our Mystery Hangouts resource, there is the 5 Clue Challenge website where there are multiple videos that other educators and students have posted from around the world. So if you move over to the middle of the screen where it says five clue challenge and you click on the link, you will be brought to this website where there are five clue challenge videos for you and your students to explore. After you have engaged with this type of learning, there is a lot of assessment that can be done with your students. Jen has linked in some great sample rubrics that you can visit that are right here at the top of your slide deck number nine. As well, there are also activities that you can extend further after you've engaged using Mystery Hangouts or the Five Clue Challenge. You can take this step further with your students after you have engaged in this type of learning with debates, large-scale literature circles, and virtual field trips. In conclusion, thank you for watching my video. Please reach out to me at jeffrey.gonzalez at wireddsp.ca for any further questions. 
I hope you try Google Hangouts and Meet in your classroom, and I would love to learn what you and your students are engaging with in the future.